In this video, we'll talk about the steering system on the X1222. We're gonna talk about how we can build the steering system and how putting the steering system on the car affects the Ackerman and bump steer, because this will have a very big effect on the handling and it's important to get it right in accordance to your servo type. So, first of all, I'm gonna show you how to put the servo saver together. The servo saver made by X-Ray is a very good and strong servo saver. It's actually used by many other car brands on the market because it's the best one. And it can be a little tricky to put together, so I'm gonna show you a few quick steps on how to do it. So the first thing you need to do is you need to put these little springs onto the, the plastic piece. You start with a spring that has airs on it. You can just clip this in place with your fingers like that, and then it's in order of size. So you start with the smaller one, and then you go towards the bigger ones. And just clip this on to the first spring with your hands. Usually you don't need to use any tool for this, you can just use your hands and clip them in place like that. And when that's done, in the end you need to put the, the cap on top. Let's push this in place here. Done. And there's a little plastic piece that goes on the front of the servo saver here. Push this in place. Like that. And then you need to choose your servo spline, which connects the servo saver to your servo. So in this case, I'm using a KO servo for this example. And KO and the Sanva servos, they have a 23 tooth spline. So it's marked with a K on it. The kit comes with three different splines. It's the KO and Sanva, which is 23 tooth. It's the high tech, which is 24 tooth. And finally, Futaba and uh, Savux, which is 25 tooth. So always uh, make sure that you have the correct spline for your servo type. And as I said, they're included three different types in the, in the box. And then we install the servo saver on the servo. Put an M3 screw. That's all done. Make sure it's nice and tight. We can move on to the turnbuckle builds. So the length of these turnbuckles is gonna be determined by the hole that you're gonna use on the steering block. So you can use the rearward hole, which means that your steering links will be shorter, or you can use the forward hole, which means that the steering links will be a bit longer. The difference is five millimeters. So for the shorter hole, we're gonna aim for a distance of um, 21 millimeters between the ball caps on the steering links. And for the, the longer position, we're gonna aim for 26 millimeters. So in this case, I'm gonna use the Hoodie turnbuckle wrench tool, which works really well for this purpose to put this together. You can just use this tool to turn the turnbuckles onto the turnbuckle piece. So in this case I'm going to use the initial setting on the car, I'm going to use the forward mount on the steering blocks. The difference between the forward and rearward hole is that in forward hole you'll have uh, less of an Ackerman effect. This means that the 
the inner wheel and the outer wheel will have a more similar steering angle in the corner. That will make the car more aggressive and you will have more steering. If you go to the rearward hole, you'll have more of an Ackerman effect. So the car will be more forgiving to drive, easier to drive, less prone to traction rolling, but it will have less steering in the corner. So in this case, we're gonna go for the setting with uh, the least amount of Ackerman effect. Ackerman effect refers to the difference between the inner and the outer wheel as the steering is applied in the corner. More Ackerman means bigger difference between the inner and the outer wheel. It's important to, to get that right not get confused. Uh, a lot of people get it the wrong way around. Check the distance here. 26.5, so almost there. It needs to be a little shorter. But then, of course, we can fine-tune this when these are mounted on the car, when we're setting up the, the toe out on the car, when it's on the setup gauges. And this hoodie turnbuckle tool really comes handy for this task saves you a lot of grief and makes it a lot easier to put these together. Repeat this process for the other turnbuckle. Let's check the distance here. 27.5, almost there. And it's 26. Turn buckles are done. Okay, we're now gonna talk a bit about the mounting position of the servo. Because the mounting position of the servo is highly dependent on two things. The servo size and the wheelbase on the car. As we spoke about earlier when we put together the front suspension, we have two options for the front wheelbase. We have the long wheelbase, which the car has mounted on it now. And we have the short wheelbase, which is two millimeters towards the back. So the Ackerman will be determined by the servo position in this case. So when you make a wheelbase adjustment, you need to keep in mind that you move the servo two millimeters um, to front or rear to maintain the same Ackerman setting. Um, so you can either move the servo or move the steering links into the same position to retain the same Ackerman uh, position. So, for example, I'm going to show you on this car, my other car, I have also a long wheelbase in the front, but I have chosen the rearward hole on the steering block. So the servo is then going to be uh, mounted further back to have the same position of the steering links. Another variable here is the servo size. So on this car, as you can see, I have a micro servo from Sanwa, which is smaller than the KO servo, which I'm going to mount on this car. So you can see the difference in servo size. Um, it's also 
a bit shorter, not sitting as high in the car as the standard servo size. So that's another variable which you have to take into account, which also affects the bumps there. So usually when you go to the micro servo from a standard one, you have to remove one millimeter of shim for the bump steer setting to retain the same bump steer value. So <clears throat> all these variables are mentioned in the manual. So all you have to do is consult the manual. You can look up the wheelbase position, the servo size and the Ackerman position on the steering block that you choose to use and you'll then know what shims and what position to use to have the initial Ackerman setting. So if you get confused, just consult the manual and you'll get your answer. In this case, I'm gonna show you how to mount a standard size servo for a long wheelbase with a forward hole on the steering block. For that, we're gonna to have to mount these servo posts at the back of the servo. Sorry, it's actually at the front of the servo, not at the back. With a micro servo from Sanwa, you always mount these at the back of the servo like this, but we're gonna to have to mount these at the front of the servo. And when you use a standard servo size, you're gonna to have to use these top holes on the servo posts because of the size of the servo. With a micro servo, it will use the, the lower holes here because the servo is sitting lower in the car. So put these in place here. So keep in mind that the servo type is gonna be a big variable for the mounting of the, um, the servo in terms of Ackerman and bump steer. So we got the servo post on here, we're gonna put it on the chassis. There's two special screws that are included to mount the servo onto the chassis. And these are very short steel screws. You'll find them in the final assembly bag and then put these on here from below. Look for the little notch here on the chassis that's been machined so that you can find the, the dead center of the chassis to be able to center the servo perfectly on the chassis. So what you need to do here is you need to look for the, the middle point of the servo saver has to be right in the middle so that the servo is centered so that you'll have a symmetrical steering to both sides. Tighten everything up here. Don't be afraid to tighten these as tight as you can because otherwise the servo will move in a crash. Okay, we got these here. We're then going to install the ball studs here. But to do this, we're gonna use the Hoodie multi-tool, which is the best way to do this. Since we've chosen this Ackerman position, with a standard size servo, we're gonna have to mount these ball studs on the front of the servo saver and not at the back. Otherwise, your steering links will be swept too far backwards. So to install these ball studs here, it's really easy, just push them onto the, uh, push the ball cups onto the ball studs using the hoodie multi-tool like this. That way you make sure that you don't damage them and they'll have free movement. I can really recommend the hoodie multi-tool. Actually, I got this the wrong way around. This one goes, the shorter ball stud here goes on the inside for the servo saver. The longer ball stud goes 
on the outside that you use for the bump steer shims. Put this on here, done. Okay, what's next? I'm gonna thread these onto the servo saver. In the lower holes on the servo saver. With an M3 nut holding this from the back. Same for the other side. Okay, that's all in place. And then finally, we're going to install the bump steer shims. So how do we determine what bump steer shims to use? I believe the kit setting is two millimeters between the steering link and the steering block. You can obviously fine tune this for the the handling and the track condition that you're racing on. So what is bump steer? Bump steer refers to a steering input that occurs from suspension compression that is not from input on the steering wheel. So basically when the car turns by itself, when you go over a bump or when the suspension is compressing. So basically unwanted um, steering from the steering system, not from your steering inputs. But this can be used to tune the, the handling of the car. So more bump steer effect will make the car more difficult to drive, but you'll have more steering. So how can you achieve more of a bump steer effect? On the X12, you do this by reducing the shimming here. So if you remove shims from under the steering link, you'll have more of a bump steer effect. You'll have more steering through the whole corner, but mainly um, noticeable on corner entry, so initial steering. Um, but that's mainly recommended for lower grip tracks uh, when the car is under steering. If you race on higher grip, I recommend using a taller shim here. So three or four millimeters normally and for lower grip, around two, two to three millimeters is the best setting. But then again, as I said, it depends on your servo type. Uh, because a micro servo usually requires one millimeter less of a bump steer shim compared to the standard servo. So I put three millimeters here with standard show, servo, which equals to two millimeters with a micro servo. And then again, you can fine tune this for your particular um, track conditions. If I am going to compare bump steer and Ackerman, I would say that bump steer affects the steering feel already from the first steering input when you, when you uh, enter the corner. Whereas Ackerman has the bigger effect when you're at full lock or when you're close to full lock. So, Ackerman does not have a big effect on the steering around neutral. Um, around that point, you'll mainly notice the, um, the bump steer, the changes that you made to the bump steer. The Ackerman, you can mainly feel uh, during uh, bigger angles of steering travel. So I hope that this was not too confusing and that you understood the basics of mounting the servo and the steering in the car and how it affects the Ackerman and bump steer. If there's any concerns or questions, just refer to the manual.